Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 2, Configuring Physical Connectivity, Chapter 5, Connecting Routers and Layer 3 Connections. In Module 1, we said that as part of the initial discovery and auto-provisioning, ACI automatically configures ISIS as the underlay protocol for VXLAN and MPBGP, with the spine serving as route reflectors, to redistribute routes coming from the outside into the ACI fabric. I wanted to remind you this since it will be relevant for you today as we learn how to perform the physical network configuration when attaching routers and L3 connections to an ACI environment, and even more in Module 3 where you will learn the logical network configuration for Layer 3 connections through something called L3 OTPGs. Let's begin our physical network configuration then by going back to our golden questions, which I'm sure you're already very familiar with. The first one is, what do you want to connect to ACI? And the answer is, I want to connect a Cisco ISR3945 router in my case, which will have a layer three connection. Therefore, I will create an L3 domain. Second one is, do I need VLANs or vSANs for that connection? In my case, I don't, since I will be setting an IP address directly on the leaf port when I perform the logical network configuration in module three. Keep in mind that you may need a VLAN pool here only if you're considering configurations like SVIs or 802.1Q sub-interfaces as part of that routed connection. The third step now is to create an AEP, which will include my L3 domain. Let's now go to the APIC and perform these three steps first. Go to Fabric, Access Policies, Maximize Physical and External Domains, and right-click to create an L3 domain. Add a name to it, and then, as we just mentioned, I won't be creating a VLAN pool this time since I won't be using SVIs nor sub-interfaces. So let's go to step three and create our AEP for our router. As always, we can go back and verify our L3 domain and the AEP we created in the corresponding sections. Let's now move on to question number four, which is which interface do you want to configure and how? In my case, I will connect interface G01 on my router to leave 101 on interface 115. As we have learned, we will need to create an interface profile with such interface and we will specify within it an access policy group where we will set the speed, we'll enable CDP, and we will also include the AEP as part of this policy group. On the router side, it is recommended that you increase the MTU size to the default ACI value, which is 9000. Although obvious, remember that ACI does not manage nor perform the external router configuration. Finally, we will assign that interface profile to the switch profile, in this case, leave 101, and we should be done. Let's go ahead and finalize our configuration. I'll start by showing you my router configuration first, and then we will configure the ACI side. Let's do a show CDP neighbors. You can see that the ACI leaf is currently not showing on the list as of now, since the ACI leaf port has not been configured and CDP is disabled by default. We will be connecting through the router's G01 interface, which is already configured, and if we take a look at the port status, we can see it is up since ACI leaf ports are on by default. We still need to perform the physical network configuration though to allow communication, so let's now go back to APIC and try to do it using the wizard. Go to Fabric, Access Policies, click on Interfaces and Policies, and then unconfigure interface. Let's select leaf 101 and interface 115 so that we can get the wizard generated leaf and interface profile names. At this point, I would normally move to the policy group creation for my individual port in the wizard. However, notice there is a red alert on the leaf profile name field saying that the switch profile name already exists. If you remember, we have used the wizard as well to create physical network configurations previously for this leaf switch. We have two options now. Either we adjust the leaf profile name so that the wizard creates a new one, or we just recycle the existing one but perform the configuration manually. Let's go ahead and do the latter, since I don't want to create yet another switch profile. So I'll just click on cancel. I'll first create our policy group by maximizing the policy group menu and right click on leave access port to create one, since we will be using a single link to connect this router. Add a name to your policy group and let's just modify a few policies to hard code the link speed to one gig, enable CDP, and of course, attach our AEP from step three. Leave the rest with the defaults and click submit. Then we need to create the interface profile. 
we can see some Leaf interface profiles that have been created by the wizard previously for Leaf 101. We have two options here. We can add the interface 115 to an existing interface profile, or we could create a new interface profile just to place interface 115 in there. Although this is not the best practice since you want to create as few objects as possible to troubleshoot faster, I will go with the latter option this time just to make it easier for you to follow. We will cover best practices to keep your configurations clean and simple in the last chapter of this module. Let's now right click on profiles and create a leaf interface profile. Just add a name to it and then create an interface selector with interface E115 and include the policy group we just created. Last, let's attach this to the switch profile. Maximize the switches, leaf switches and profile section and we see there is an existing switch profile for leaf 101 which was previously created by the wizard as well. In this case, I will just reuse it and add the new interface profile I created in the previous step, which includes port 115. And I'm done. Let's go back to the CLI on the router and verify that we have leaf1 as one of the CDP neighbors. Remember, you can also verify this on the APIC site either through the CLI or through the GUI as well, where we can see the configured elements on each switch and port or by selecting the leaf and interface on the left menu, which displays details like speed, MTU, and many more. We are done performing the physical configuration for our border leaf. As a summary, we learn how to perform the physical network configuration for a routed connection. As long as you follow the golden questions, you should be fine. Remember that we will cover the logical configuration in module three, where we will learn how to configure routing protocols and more. ACI provides you with a better, simpler, and secure network, any size, anywhere, and on any cloud. If you want to learn more about other common tasks and how ACI radically simplifies network provisioning and operations, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.